are so pleased to welcome back to Open our first guest, who is a Bronx native with a passion for community and entrepreneurship. He founded the United Business Cooperative, uh, addressing the realities of immigrant business owners, allowing them to thrive, develop, and remain in their place of business in the wave of gentrification. And as a social entrepreneur focused on sustainability, he is an advocate for hyper-local food security, producing plant-based food systems through reborn farms. And well, he recently partnered with the Botanical Gardens to highlight edible Caribbean plants currently on display as part of the African American Gardens. Please welcome back to open a la virtual. I would have loved to have him in person, but let's give it up for social entrepreneur, food justice, a small business advocate, activist, I should say as well, Henry Abispo. Hello, Henry. Hi, Rinya. How are you? It's such a pleasure to be here. Oh, wow. It's so wonderful to have you back on. And I got to say, it is really, really, really inspirational to see how you move. It is really amazing what you've been able to accomplish. In, actually, since the last time we had you on the show. Yes, pre-COVID, um, as I remember. Yes. Um, it was, it's been a while, and um, I'm so happy to be on with you, and I, um, I look forward to coming again in person. Um, <laughs> I know, I thought it was like, oh. Nothing, yeah, there's nothing like experiencing your energy in person, and it's, it's just so infectious, and um, I, um, I need a dose of it, so I'll definitely come in person next time. Oh, uh, <laughs> yay, thank you for understanding, right? Now that we're back to hugging, pero anyway, we're here to talk about all this amazing work that you've done, um, and for being a stand for our community, and making things accessible, and being so innovative in the process. Oh my gosh, you're such a brilliant individual. So. Um, let, let's just introduce our audience to um, how we first met and how we introduced you to our audience, right? It was through Born Juice. Um, I know you were really encouraging um, the borough that happens to be considered like uh, 42, uh, number 42 of one of the unhealthiest counties in the United States, right? Um, is it yes. 42 or 62? 62. 62. It's 62. And so um, I know the uh, initiative was to kind of introduce people to juicing and understanding the benefits from the nutrients and certain juices and blending them. And you had this product, Born Juice, right? Then, yeah. uh, uh, and, and then uh, I, you, you started this planting uh, or creating greenhouses on roofs, right? Which is kind of like where we're at now with uh, Reborn Farms. The floor is yours. So let's break that down for our audience so that they understand that it not only serves from assisting with the breathing, but it also serves in obviously sustainability, which is what you're about. So let's talk about it. Yes, thank you. Um, so, you know, I've been in the community working around food justice for a decade now, and it's really creating initiatives, social enterprises and cooperatives, um, addressing those issues from a borough-wide perspective. And so when we launched the Bronx Salad Initiative, which lasted about four years, we were able to touch all of these components in the community, whether it was schools or uh, restaurants or the hospitals and the cultural institutions, et cetera, to be able to now deploy healthy food through this initiative. And, and so wait, before you keep going, I just want to be clear because I only mentioned the Reborn Farms and since you mentioned the Bronx Salad, really it was about the community gardens are producing their own foods so that uh, there is that sense of sustainability. And this is all pre-COVID, mind you, right? Yes, exactly. And the idea was to uh, do away with a system that has us relegated um, to being underserved and having really poor choices when it comes to food or just in general food access. But what if we could engage all of the parts of our community um, and all the stakeholders and institutions to deploy this food and the education? And so that's really where everything sort of stems from when it comes to what I'm doing now. And Born Juice was an extension of that as well because all of my partners um, were all 
also involved. And what we did essentially was build a model where we could be experiential. Uh, we could create a product that would carry our, our mission um, of, of contributing to health in the Bronx, but also for people to have access to nutritionally dense foods through these uh, fresh juices. And be and proactive so, in the process, too, because it, 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 in the end, it's really their hands are producing it from soup to nuts, right? Exactly, right. exactly. So the idea was to have that economic development component as well, mm -hmm. um, that social component and that social innovation part of it, uh, where we could also educate. And so we created these pop-ups at these institutions where we would educate um, and also bring in the planetary component, which is a zero waste component. As you create food and you create waste, how do then do you manage that? And so that was really the ethos of Born Juice um, and in partnership with pretty much all the large institutions that wanted to address uh, food. And so it was a very successful engagement with the community. And then COVID happened. Um, and so it, it, it allowed us now to think in a very, I would say, strategic way, but also everything that we were planning for with the Bronx Ballad, with the United Business Cooperative and all of the other initiatives now and everything that we had learned from there, we wanted to scale that. And that essentially became Reborn Farm. And what Reborn Farms is, is a decentralized food system that serves the community and it's centered where the needs are. And our first iteration of that is going to be us opening a farm, which is the first of its kind in the country on public housing, on a rooftop greenhouse. Wow. Um, the the wow. system is a hydroponic system. Oh my. And it's technological, um, and it's really focusing on agricultural technology, but also building a pipeline for economic development through that workforce development component. Wow. So, okay. So these, it's not even just about the greenhouses. It's about these greenhouses being built on, on public housing establishments. Exactly. It's taking it to another level, addressing the needs where the people are, as opposed to this trickle down idea that food eventually gets to people. That's not true. Um, and we understand that, that, you know, the trickle down economics and those ideas aren't, uh, feasible because they're not true. And so why not center where the needs are? And that is part of our mission. Well, I congratulate you on being so passionate about this and making it your life's mission. Um, I, I, I do want to acknowledge that you just recently won an award, and perhaps we should share that with our viewers. I'm looking for my notes here from the Global Food Systems, right? So just educate us a little bit about gastronomy and, um, and this particular organization that's awarded you uh, with a grant as well. So, yeah, so, I, I mean, I'm still... Uh, I, it's been a whirlwind, and I'm still. I, I know, to bravo, out. bravo, <laughs> bravo, yeah. Henry, bravo. <laughs> Thank you. I'm still trying to. I'm still. Um, I'm still. I'm, I'm still living in it. Uh, the award essentially uh, was in Spain, and we were competing with five other countries, five other cities, as um, the model food technology model. Um, that was that would be a viable model for the planet and people. And so we were competing globally um, with our model, Reborn Farms, and we were in Spain pitching our ideas and we ended up winning. The project won and it won the Global Food Tech Prize wow. um, by the um, Basque Culinary Center, which is probably the most renowned gastronomy center in the world. And so now we are in partnership as a result of that, developing systems and ideas and moving forward also product um, that we will develop based on what we're growing to be able to now scale these ideas. I and, love it. Oh my yeah, gosh. it's been, it's been oh a whirlwind. Oh my gosh, it's so exciting. I'm so proud of you. And we're so proud to share it with our viewers here. Uh, you're making such a huge difference and um, 
And I want to make sure that we don't end this segment without um, talking a little bit about the African American garden um, that is currently on display and, uh, and your contributions to that and how all of this has led into that and how you're just making it like, this is your legacy, Henry. Um, I, I, I admire you so much, right, on a personal level because um, while you've been fully funded to earn your PhD through the Melinda and Bill Gates Foundation, um, you've chosen to just live your life giving it back to our community and serving our community in this way um, through your entrepreneurship and, um, and your brilliance, your brilliance. This is brilliant. Thank you, thank you. I, 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 rec I receive your words and I am, uh, I'm, I'm very grateful. Uh, yes, I, I opted out of that um, PhD to follow my heart, essentially. Um, although I, I'm also grateful to have received that, um, I, I, I took a different route and it is the route, and, I, and, and it was a, a wholehearted way of engagement with a face that I didn't know existed that I essentially carved out for myself um, because I needed to, because I opted out of something and opted into following my heart. And so this allowed me to really build what I wanted to see in the world. And that's exactly what, you know, what's on display of, of, of the initiatives and the projects I've done. And this specific project and my engagement with the uh, New York Botanical Garden is now a four-year engagement since they opened the Edible Academy. Uh, I've been in partnership with them. Um, and they, they've been the most incredible institution and partnership uh, to me and also to the community. Um, and really, this African-American garden um, project uh, started last year, and it was uh, it's headed by Dr. Jessica Harris, mm -hmm. um, author of High on the Hog, who's also on Netflix uh, with the, uh, the same title uh, in the show. And you can consider her probably, you know, most definitely um, the most foremost, um, I would say, food systems when it comes to the African diaspora. Um, I'm uh, not knowledgeable person. And so she created this garden in partnership with the botanical garden. And really what it is, is the first year was this experience of African Americans and that experience of the transatlantic slave trade and what that contribution was to the United States and what these plants, these edible plants were and telling the stories of these plants. And so last year, about 70 plants that were on display in the African American garden. And this year, it is the African American garden, the Caribbean experience. And the Caribbean experience is so unique and so special. Those of you that have been to the Caribbean, those of you that are from the Caribbean, you know that. And Dr. Harris um, and the New York Botanical Garden wanted to focus on that. And so it's such a vast engagement that the plants doubled. Last year was 70 plants. This year is 140 plants, wow. over 140 plants, edible plants that you will see there and see and engage in the history, engage in what happened in the Caribbean, how people that were already there, like the indigenous people, um, created their... Uh, staple of foods and what they did and how they engaged with that. And then once Africans were brought into the Caribbean, what happened with that dynamic and the food that they brought, um, but also how they engaged in this inter or co-creation with the indigenous people to adapt to certain realities in the Caribbean that were foreign to them. And so what you see on display is really this story, this history, and this powerful engagement when it comes to the people of the Caribbean, but also the history, the transatlantic slave trade, the colonization, and what that, what that has done in terms of Africa, the Caribbean, and how it's all linked also back here to the Bronx. Because 
as we tell the story, we also tell the story of the Caribbean people in the Bronx. And so I ask and uh, really welcome all of you to encourage come actually we encourage more. everyone to go experience it and so before we go we do also i would like for you to just give us a quick walkthrough because i understand that there is a partnership with the cave canon foundation and so there's a poetry component to it right so uh, yeah. i'm curious to know i haven't visited yet but i will before um it's uh, the display is over uh is it an experience of being able to taste the food while being educated through this uh, this poetic form uh what what does the the tour look like is it a tour yes. or do people just go and spend an afternoon exploring so yes so it's both uh, on certain days there is a tour so you can check online to see when that's going to happen but you can just feel free to experience it yourself um there are a lot of people that are very knowledgeable about what the plants in the caribbean and what's happened is that people feel so familiar that they, they're able to identify and understand and be in relationship to these plants as they walk through uh, the garden. And so essentially what you will see as you come into the space is this house that is representative of a Caribbean home. And this Caribbean home with the colors, and then what you'll see is um, an emblem of a very indigenous engagement with the land and with the home through a calabash, and this calabash is representative of community. And so as you enter, you'll be able to see this, you're entering a home, and the home of the Caribbean almost. And there you're able also on certain days to taste certain drinks that are served in the Caribbean, um, where you will have tastings, um, and also uh, that from the botanical garden um, on certain days is also available. And so you wind through these patches uh, that are very specific to the experience of the Caribbean, for example, abundance. There's one called abundance. And you'll be able to see in this one called abundance what they what they created when it comes to um, uh, their, the gorges or how they use plants for utensils or clothing or um, other instruments. Right, so how the um, plants so, were also used for fabric as well to create other yeah. other survival tools, right, really, at the end of the day. Exactly. Uh, okay, so this is all on display to September 11th, is that correct? Yes. And so do people need to buy special tickets for this garden, or is it uh, part of the New York Botanical Garden entry? Yeah, so it's part of the entry, and as you know, all Bronx sites are able to enter for free. Um, since COVID, that's the new uh, way that the Botanical Gardens has been engaging, and so all all of the people from the Bronx can go for free. And oh, so nice. I, I, yes, it's a beautiful thing. And so that is if a beautiful you thing. Enter for free, you'll be able to walk to the garden. Um, yes. Well, I you know henry uh i thank you so much for breaking it all down for us uh the way you have today and for taking the time um even though it's virtual last dig <laughs> it's always it's always a wonderful time sharing space with you though um and so and much. congratulations on everything and thank you for giving us a, a almost like a visual tour of what to expect when visiting the new york botanical garden because i was there i saw it thank you Thank you. Thank you. I so appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you and giving you a hug in person also. Thank you once again, Henry Obispo, social entrepreneur, food justice, small business activist and founder of Reborn Farms. The African American Garden, the Caribbean experience is happening now through September at the New York Botanical Garden. And that's from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. free to all Bronx sites. And for more information, visit nybg.org. And for more on Henry, you can visit henryabispo.com. Stay tuned. More open when we return.